subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lepakshi khurana here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 11th of October. Five Indian Army personnel killed during counter-terrorism operation in Jammu and Kashmir. Lack of infrastructure forces school students in Pakistan administered Kashmir to study in open. And Taliban will be judged on deeds, says U.S. after candid and professional talks. And now for all the details. Five Indian Army soldiers, including one junior commissioned officer, were killed in a gunfight during an anti-terror operation in Punch sector of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Monday. This came after two terrorists were neutralized in separate encounters in the Union territory earlier in the day. Five Indian Army soldiers were killed in an encounter that broke out during an anti-terror operation in Poonch sector of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Monday. The operation was launched in a village in Poonch in the early hours following intelligence inputs about presence of terrorists. An encounter ensued after terrorists opened heavy fire on the search parties resulting in critical injuries to one junior commission officer and four other soldiers. All of them succumbed to their injuries. Operations were still underway in the area till the last reports came in. This came after police informed that two terrorists were neutralized in separate encounters in Anantnag and Bandipura districts of Jammu and Kashmir early on Monday. One of them was identified as a member of the resistance force affiliated to Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba terror outfit and was involved in the recent civilian killings in the Kashmir Valley, an official said. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched Indian Space Association ISPA on Monday via video conferencing and said that India will ensure that the space sector unites the world. ISPA, PM Modi observed, will act as a single window and independent agency on matters related to space technology. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi gave a renewed push to privatization in the Indian space sector during the launch of the Indian Space Association ISPA on Monday via video conferencing. And he also interacted with representatives of the space industry on the occasion. ISPA is the premier industry association of space and satellite companies, which aspires to be the collective voice of the Indian space industry. The agency will help in making India self-reliant, technologically advanced and a leading player in the space arena. ISPA Prime Minister Modi observed will act as a single window and independent agencies on matters related to space technology. Private sector ko innovation ki ajhadi. Dusra sarkar ki enabler ke rup mein bhoomi ka. Tisra bhavishya ke liye yuvao ko tayar karna. Aur chowtha space sector ko Samanya Manviki Pragatike Samsadhan Ke Rupme Dekhna In Chalo Pillars Ki Bunyad Apne Aapme A Sadharan Sambhavanao Ke Dwar Kholti Hai India directed its space agency ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization, to open up its launch facilities for the private sector and said that the role of the government will be more of an enabler and aggregator instead of an organization on its own. Along with ISRO, ISPA's founding members will work on the issues of policy in the space sector, building space economic hubs, incubators and capacity building. The 13th round of talks between Indian and Chinese military commanders to resolve a protracted standoff in eastern Ladakh have broken down, with both sides blaming each other on Monday 
for the failure to make progress. India's Defence Ministry in a statement said, the Indian side pointed out that the situation along the line of actual control had been caused by unilateral attempts of China to alter the status quo and were in violation of bilateral agreements. India gave constructive suggestions, but the Chinese side was not agreeable and could not provide any forward-looking proposals, the statement said. Meanwhile, a Chinese military spokesperson said unreasonable demands by the Indian side added to difficulties to the negotiations. Earlier in February, both India and China had pulled back troops from Pengongso Lake area. Despite two rounds of disengagement at friction points, the two armies still have thousands of troops and advanced weaponry in the Ladakh region. Moving on, the persisting condition of poor educational infrastructure in Pakistan-administered Kashmir has created a worrisome environment for students in the illegally occupied region. Young children in Chakorti are forced to attend their classes under open sky in the absence of classrooms as the only school in their area was damaged years ago in an earthquake. Young children from Chakosi area in Pakistan-administered Kashmir who were forced to attend their classes under open sky have expressed their worries over poor educational infrastructure which has made studying difficult for them. The students said with the administration heartily concerned about their basic needs of a permanent classroom, toilets and safe drinking water, their dream of deciding their future seems more distant than ever. The poor educational infrastructure and lack of job opportunities over the years have fueled the sense of deprivation among the youth in the illegally occupied region. And now I'm going to go to the fifth class. But the building of the school has not been made yet. This is a problem with the water. There is no place to sit here. We have to sit here in the water. 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 Locals claim that the 2005 deadly earthquake in the region destroyed the only primary school in the area. Since then, children's access to quality education continues to be affected. In our village, in 2005, there was a primary school. The building was in the area. After that, no one has not made a building. There is a lot of problems for children. There is a lot of problems for drinking water, there is a lot of problems for washroom, there is a lot of problems for building. Our children who come to the village, they become the problems for the rain, they become the problems for the rain, they become the problems for the rain. The people of Pakistan administered Kashmir have been waiting for years now for a better administration that could work for the development. But the ground reality suggests the government is hardly bothered about their concerns and aspirations. The two-day first face-to-face -face meeting between the United States and Taliban delegates in Doha concluded on Sunday after both sides discussed a range of issues. The United States called the meeting candid and professional and reiterated that the Taliban would be judged on their actions, not just their words. The United States said on Sunday the first face-to-face -face meeting between senior U.S. and Taliban officials in Doha since the hardline group retook power in Afghanistan was candid and professional, and that the U.S. side reiterated that Taliban would be judged on their actions and not just their words. State Department spokesman Ned Price in a statement said, the U.S. delegation at the weekend talks focused on security and terrorism concerns and safe passage for U.S. citizens, other foreign nationals and Afghan partners, as well as on human rights, including rights of women and provision of humanitarian assistance. Meanwhile, the foreign ministry in Kabul said the two-day meeting went well and welcomed the U.S. offer of humanitarian assistance and added local authorities would facilitate and cooperate with aid groups, but it should not be linked to political issues. The United States and other Western countries are grappling with difficult choices as a severe humanitarian crisis looms large in Afghanistan. They are trying to work out how to engage with the Taliban without granting the group the legitimacy it seeks while ensuring humanitarian aid flows into the country. 
And more on news from Afghanistan. The economic crisis is among the biggest challenges facing the Taliban since they took control of Afghanistan in mid-August. As Afghanistan teeters on the brink of economic collapse, some residents of capital Kabul say they are struggling to make ends meet. Many Afghans now unemployed are selling their possessions to pay for ever scarcer food. Residents in Afghan capital Kabul facing soaring prices are concerned about more possible economic and social problems under Taliban rule. As Afghanistan teethers on the brink of economic collapse, some residents said on Monday that they are struggling to make ends meet. Many Afghans now unemployed are selling their possessions to pay for even scarcer food. <laughs> در شرکت آب مدنی کار میکنیم روزگار خوب بود که رای خانه میتیم بودیجه میتیم فعلا صفر شده دیگه در خانه هم چیز نیست دیگه فرق نزینیم تو کراچیگه که خریدیم کار میکنیم غریبی بچه که کای ما خسته مفروشه و پو خانه مفروشیم چیزا The departure of US-led forces and many international donors robbed the country of grants that financed 75% of public spending according to the World Bank دیگه سنف هفت مکتب هستم و خاطر که طالبان نمیمونه از سنف شش به بالا مکتب هم یک دوله جور کردیم که دینامی کار میکنم تا شهس رو پفت هر وی نمیره تو زمیش نهان میبرم خانه پدر بیکار است International officials are preparing to fly in cash for the needy while avoiding financing the Taliban government, reports suggest. The emergency funding aimed at averting a humanitarian crisis in the face of drought and political upheaval could see U.S. dollar bills flown into Kabul for distribution via banks in payments of less than 200 U.S. dollars directly to the poor, with the Taliban's blessing, but without their involvement. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa on Sunday emphasized that he is committed to protect the country from any recurrence of acts of terrorism or religious extremism. Addressing a ceremony held in capital Colombo to mark the 72nd anniversary of the Sri Lankan army, Gotabaya urged all Sri Lankans to extend their support to move forward the country in the correct path under the notion of one country and one law without corruption. He assured that steps would be taken to amend the constitution and introduce a new electoral system as promised to the people. The president noted that although the economy had fallen due to the COVID-19 pandemic, a large number of works have been done for the benefit of the people during that period. The Sri Lankan army was established in 1949 and consists of 25 infantry, support and service regiments. Women in India's Western Gujarat state performed a special dance balancing brass pots on their heads to please and thank Goddess Umiya as part of the celebrations of the ongoing Hindu festival of Navratri or Nine Nights. Devotees believe that whatever they ask for during the festival, the Goddess fulfills their wish. Donned in colourful traditional dress, women in Surat city of India's western Gujarat state balanced brass pots on their heads as they danced in coordinated movements in circles to mark the ongoing Navratri or Nine Nights festival on Sunday. The unique dance signifies gratitude to the Hindu goddess Umiya the clan deity of the regional agrarian and landlord caste in Gujarat. Devotees believe that whatever they ask for with a pure heart, the goddess fulfills their wish. And in turn, to please the goddess, they dance with this ritual near her temple. हमारी माँ उम्मीद का एक हमारे ऊपर आशीर्वाद है कि सभी बहने सिर के ऊपर मटका लेके प्राचीन गरबा कर रही हैं। Meanwhile, devotees continued to throng temples across the country in large numbers on Monday to mark the fifth day of the festival, dedicated to several incarnations of Hindu goddess Durga. During this period, Hindus offer special prayers and also observe fast to please the goddess and also refrain from taking alcohol, meat, onion and garlic in food. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.